Hi guys, Anya here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a CC squat. I don't know why they're called CC squats because there's nothing CC about this movement, but I'm going to try to make it easy for you to understand the dynamics of it so we can make it a little bit more doable. Okay, so let's uh, start uh, with the feet hip distance apart. You really don't need the yoga mat. I highly recommend not to do it on the carpet though. So you need a little bit of grip. Uh, we're going to be going into serious balancing pose so uh, you don't want to be on something that slides around so uh, either on like a nice floor with the grip or actually the yoga mat. Uh, anyway, uh, feet hip distance apart or wider. If you have a tendency of spinning your toes out, do so. It's totally fine. Just make sure that you don't want to put on any pressure into your lower back. So the area of around your SI joint and L4, L5, the lumbar lower part should be open so that vertebras are not uh, contracting or pressing on one on top of another. This is going to be essential because we are moving into pretty deep back bending position as we also balancing. So you want to make sure that you're not putting any pressure on the spinal extensors. So from here, we're going to start pretty easily. We're going to bring the weight into the heels and just bend your knees. And as you're bending your knees, I want you to focus not really on the knees as much as on the shins and the calves. So feel like you're making your uh, lower part of the legs a little bit, low, a little bit heavier. And at the same time, try to bring your hips a little more forward. Now, as you're bringing your hips forward, and this is nothing active here, you want to make sure that the pelvis is in neutral position. So again, no tucking, no tucking, and no compression. Now, we have to understand that there's a little bit of body polarity move of movement. So the lower part of the body from the hips is going to be going in opposite direction to the uh, top part of the body. And if we're understanding the movement of polarity in the body, this pose should be uh, become very easy for you to understand and play with. So, waist in the heels, knees bent, hips forward. Check the lower back, make sure you're not compressing. If you do, if you have tendency of compressing the lower back, bring your hands on your frontal ribs and try to lift the frontal ribs up. That's going to elongate your lower abdominal muscles, but also it's going to give you the lift in the lumbar. So as we're moving with the knees forward, with the shins and the calves forward, we're going to start bringing the weight of the body from the heels through the soles of your feet towards the toes. We're going to relax the shoulders. We're going to relax the hands by your side. If you want, you can shake it off. And then from here, start bringing the weight into the toes, lifting the heels just maybe half inch off the floor. Now, as soon as those heels are lifting, you're going to bring your knees forward and up. And this is the action that we're going to be looking for in the legs. Forward and up. At the same time, hips are going to move forward and up. Now from here, take a nice big inhale, chin is in, exhale, start bringing the soles of your feet down to the floor, heels down, and then change positioning of the pelvis so the hips are moving back, knees back, torso is leaning forward. A little bit of primal movement here to shake it off and come up to neutral position in Tadasana. Let's move uh, into the same variation again, so we're going to Redistribute the weight from the heels through the soles of your feet to the toes. Lift the heels lightly up. And again, knees and hips forward and up. Now the torso is moving back and down. So as I'm lengthening my torso back, I'm going to coil my shoulders back and down. This is pretty much what we're looking uh, at as a polarity of the movement, right? The lower part of the body is moving forward. Upper part of the body is moving backwards. From here, let's come back to the primal movement, pressing the heels down, hips back, torso forward, shake it off. Come up all the way up. And let's play with a little bit of variations in here. So again, the same thing. Shift forward, bring the weight to the toes, knees, hips, forward, up. Torso back and down. Now from here, let's start spinning the torso a little bit more to the right. Relax the right shoulder. See if the right hand can tap, just tap towards the ankle. Then bring the hand against the hip. Push it back. Primal movement. 
and up to standing. Shake it up. Let's try the other side. So again, forward and up, back and down. Turn your torso to the left. See if the left hand can tap, just tap towards the left ankle or left heel. Come up all the way up. And again, primal position to shake it off. Come up to neutral. And this time, let's try to play with tapping your both hands towards the both heels of both ankles. Eventually, you're going to try to go and hold for these couple of breaths in each movement. I just want to show you the variations that you can uh, take as a tip and just play with. Okay, so let's do it again. Shift forward, hips forward and up. Shoulders back and down. Relax your hands, relax your arms. See if you can push the hips so far forward and get top towards the heels. And then slowly come up all the way up. Primal position, shake it off. Slow motion from your roll up to standing. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Namaste.